Tom's. Maloney, Maloney, Matani, Metio, MZ, and welcome to another Jet Setting episode of Teenagers on a Mission, brought to you by SABC Education. I'm a Kolwon Kengobo, right here on SABC One. Zanzi for sure, Mnaga Dimbongi Sifu. And I am Siabonga Kwala. Now, Mtanjake, we are taking off and looking to the sky. Now, what exactly are flying objects? Now, Mtanjake, we look at all types of flying objects, including in Ngolomoya, Wenandaga, rockets, space shuttles, and even UFOs. Do UFOs even exist? We'll be checking out some theories that could support that they do. And also, Futu Sobes Bega at some incidents throughout the history in which people have seen them. In Shadokanya, can we track UFOs and other flying objects using systems like radar? And we'll be checking out some of those systems too. We'll also be finding out more something more natural up in the air with the pattern. So let's take a look at what's coming up. Let's get it. Coming up next on TOMZ, we'll be finding out about some unidentified flying objects. So we see an air traffic control room to find out what's in Seven Sanjani technology to track flying objects at the Swatcombs Air Base. We'll also be finding out how weather patterns in the air can have devastating effects. Ku clockwise gets a misfunda all about the history of flight. Kwaye ku cyberspace we hit the web for some awesome apps. We'll also get some high flying career advice queen my pepper Z to in their career segment. Zinin's gay objects as well as his bone in the sky. As is as you find name Molomoya, name Daga, as well as helicopters as it is his bone young me. Got to get there are also objects that we sometimes cannot explain. We call these the UFOs or unidentified flying objects. Yeah, I'm Okay, Do you think there's life on other planets? I know, I don't think so. You don't think so? Yeah. No, I don't think so. So you think Jupiter and Mars don't have people that live there? Mm -mm, I'm okay. No, such things don't exist for me. So you don't believe in aliens? No. No, it's not possible. What do you mean? Um, there can't be life on other planets because there's only life on Earth. Okay, cool. You believe in UFOs? No. Ah, there's no such thing. Yeah, yeah, I believe in those. Do you ha have you ever seen one? No. So if you believe in UFOs, do you think there's people living in other planets? Yeah, like I'm an alien, yeah. yeah. Oh, so now so you believe I'm a Yeah, so you believe so if I have a clear. So when I call it, I'm going to go to the other space except Earth. Yeah, I'm going to go to the slime slime and the Okay, shout out to you, OMZ. We out here. You know that we've been doing for years ever since the Wright brothers launched their first successful flight in 1903. Since then, technology has grown by a massive amount. And now we have space shuttles and rockets that can go to the moon and jets that can go faster than the speed of sound. Oh, wow. But have you ever wondered about flying objects that may be somewhere else? For years, we've been wondering if there's life on other planets. Mm -hmm. And for years, people have been claiming to see these strange visitors. Hi, Bo. Strange unidentified flying objects or UFOs have been seen in our sky since early histories. Now writings in India mention flying chariots and there's even a story of one of those chariots sending a shining glass to destroy a city in a fire brighter than the sun. In the 1800s, mysterious airships were seen in places around the world. Now these strange airships were reported in New Zealand and also in America. World War II aircraft nicknamed Foo Fighters were seen by pilots. They appeared like luminous glowing balls that performed incredible aerial maneuvers. Over the years, UFO researchers have documented lots of evidence, and as time progresses, we might have an evidence of life on another planet in our lifetime. I wonder if we'll ever know for sure if there are creatures from outer space. This isn't Renaneo. Can we really be the only life from the universe? In my papers, they don't think we are the sort. And Tinage will keep looking to the skies for Ian Bendula. One way we can track flying objects and manage how they land and where they go is at an air traffic control center. We visited one at Swat Corps to find out Kabanzu, which local Kusebenz Alanjan. Check it out. I'm Captain Klaus, and then called Bongani Ekaya, and then my job, I'm an air traffic controller in the South African Air Force. Seven's air traffic controller is whereby uh, uh, we make sure that in the sky there's uh, expeditious flow and safe of traffic because of, as we know that as a flyer, they can't see each other most of the time because of they're flying in levels and different directions. So we as air traffic controllers, we're there to make sure that whenever they fly in the sky, they are safe. We control them from ground until they're landing wherever they're going. As an aerodrome controller, most of the time you don't utilize uh, the picture like this one. 
So basically, it's a smaller a space of which you use your mind to keep track. You must have them in mind where are the, your, tra your, 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 your aircrafts at the all times. To check. And then as an FIS controller and approach controller, because of now, that's when you start using your, your APDS, of which is an A picture displays. A radar is an equipment, your aircraft. APDS. Radar ilinka your position of the aircraft to the screen so that you can see what the aircraft is going on. Like here, for you to see this is an aircraft, it shows a level the aircraft that 07 simply means the aircraft is maintaining 7,000, it's flying at 7,000 feet. And then the 2000, it's a skog, maybe it's a skog, it's like how about Fali so that they can identify a, a different place. Basically, skog can number, yeah, four letter, yeah, four numbers. But of Fangyona, when you're requesting departure clearance. Departure clearance is going to go to your first point as well. It's either you turn left, you climb whatever level, key number you want to and then as a pilot, you sitting inside the cockpit, you try insert that to your system, so that as soon as you get airborne, the radar will pick you up. As soon as the radar picks you up, and then it will show on the APDS on, or on the screen the skok, like now. This guy is cocking 6772. If you can check Kaufela aircraft, they're flying now. They have skok, but you'll never find an aircraft with the same skok because of this skok is allocated to a, a specific aircraft. That's how skok is And then as soon as Ulenda, if it's a destination, then you have to switch it off because of how to fly a happy, they give you another new skok. As a pilot, you can file a flight plan. And then when you file a flight plan, they say you can go to Johannesburg or Cape Town, near the flight plan from there. When you start, you request your start from the air traffic controllers. You cannot just start. It's a procedure. You request a start from the air traffic controllers, bow starter, and then from there, you request a taxi. A taxi keep the routes whereby you will route on before you're getting airborne. And then from there, but offer departure clearance. A departure clearance key information whereby to your destination or your first point, what level. That's where you, you get your skok. And then skok how when you're airborne, no acknowledge about or okay. This is the guy. This is Bongani. because of you can only be Bongani with that skok. There's no way we're going to try this car with say two just one at the same time. We already playing this car at Milan. Basically, what we're having, we're having the radar. You must be monitoring all the time, and then there's. A, a, a vertical separation that must always be there, of which it's a thousand feet separation. That's why you find out with the airplane, the Gaatu Melana, but at the end, there's still a thousand separation, a link vertical. If not a vertical separation, then there must be sep uh, horizontal, yeah, yeah, 10 nautical miles separation. That's why you will never find the airplane in the Gaatu Melana how closer. And then, as you can see, the plane is a nana, they fly a monana. They are going to different places. But the vector, depending on the air guy, like this one in the operator overhead waterproof and the operator low level. So basically, it's equally an aerodrome controller. As soon as Abatla will climb very high, that's when an aerodrome controller must coordinate with an approach controller. That's another level of controlling because of the airspace is divided vertically in levels. Approach controller, they will take it from flight level from 7,600 feet to Boma flight level 195. Then we'll hand over to Bona and then we'll Bona Baba Vector to wherever they're going. But for you to get that service, you must have a flight plan. Yo, now that is a stressful job, eh? I mean, imagine having to make sure that all the planes at the airport are landed safely. It's a job that requires total concentration at all times, and it's actually ranked number four in the list of top five most stressful jobs. Galana in Klabedi. Yo, and you thought you were stressed about exams. Mm hmm think again. With that, let's take a quick commercial break. Got to get. Here's what's coming up right after this. Kasimuyake will be finding out more about natural flying objects in the air, weather patterns, and just how they affect the sea travel. Otherwise, it's pause. Again, as as Ghani, but now we are ready for lift off with another amazing episode of TOMZ being your teenagers on a mission. Mm -hmm. We are checking on flying objects of all shapes and sizes, Nam Chanjo, from UFOs to the first planes in the air, and even some more natural things up in the air, like our weather patterns, which affect us. La Inshallah, no matter how advanced we become, we are still very much affected by weather patterns. Why you can say something about South African weather services. Weather phenomena occurs in the troposphere, just below the stratosphere, high above us. And everything 
everything that happens all the way up there in the air affects us in so many ways, Lana Mjabin. So here's a look at how natural flying objects affect our weather patterns, Lana Mjabin. Um, I work for the South African Weather Service. Um, I'm actually a forecaster. Meteorology has two divisions. You can go into research and you can go into forecasting. Okay, forecasting is what um, I do, which is basically short-term weather. And then um, in research, they do basically the long-term weather. So they, we get what we use to forecast from the researchers. It's a very scientific the way we predict the weather. Um, we use mathematical forecasting modeling, computer modeling, which basically breaks down and um, explains difficult and complex math mathematical equations that describe how um, the atmosphere progresses. Okay. So basically, um, there is observations that are done on a daily basis, the temperature, and some of these are some of the instruments that they use to um, observe the weather. And then these observations that are done are all put into a a computer system, it's a whole large network over the country, put into a computer system using some of the um, computer models they run and then they produce a forecast. So we look at the forecast and then we make some adjustment to the forecast that is produced and then we look, okay, is it going to rain tomorrow depending on the weather system that's currently dominating over the country. And then we draw up the charts that we send through to the media, which then they use, which is what you see basically on TV. The higher you go, the cooler it gets. For instance, um, over a mountain um, like Lesotho, Drakensberg, over those areas, um, you, the, the temperatures cool down. Okay, that's basically why you can expect snowfall over the area. You can expect really cool conditions. So, for instance, as here in Pretoria, we are um, in height. We are actually lower than people in Johannesburg. So they are cooler because they are higher than we are. So every time we talk about temperatures, theirs will normally be cooler than ours because they're higher lying. Karalmutu Ashkonyagoya, Ashkonyagova Joburg, Ashkonyagoya Cape Town, using a plane. Um, there are a couple of things that you have to look at. Okay, one of the things that you look at, have to consider is wind speed and wind direction. Okay, they ask um, forecasters the wind speed and the direction from the airport that they're flying from, at the height that they wish they're flying, and to where the airport that they're going to. Another thing that you have to consider is um, the freezing levels. So this is basically the level or the height at which um, the temperatures reach zero. Um, remember, I said that as you go higher, temperatures become lower. So and then. Generally, you have to know what the weather is. Um, so is there a thunderstorm that's happening where you are? And is it clear to where you're going? And um, is it clear where you're going to land as well? Weather patterns in general, um, depending on the intensity, can really cause a lot of devastating effects. Um, for instance, I'm going to give you a, um, an example. A couple of weeks back, we had what we call a cut of low pressure system. Um, it caused a lot of rainfall over the western parts of the country, flooding over the western parts of the country, um, as well as a cold front, an intense cold front that passes through. can also cause a lot of flooding, can also cause um, snowfall. So depending on the intensity of the weather system, um, then it will determine how devastating the effects are. So what a cold front is, is basically the simplified way is a meeting point between a cold air mass from the south and a warm air mass from the north. So wherever they meet, you'll expect a whole lot of instability occurring at that meeting point. And then you'll expect rainfall at that point, you'll expect thick cloud band at that point. So if the, that cold front is passing over the Western Cape, okay, with the cold air mass that's behind it, it moves over through the Western Cape, um, lowering the temperatures, causing rainfall, um, as well as some strong winds over the Western Cape. As it moves through, it continues to weaken, um, but still, because of the cold air mass that it's bringing behind it, continues to lower and cool, cool temperatures um, over, the, over the country, depending on how strong the cold, depending on how strong it is. As the cold front passes, it is associated with a specific cloud band. So the way we identify a cold front on a satellite imagery is looking at the cloud band um, that is associated with it. Chair Kochibwana Wapononi on the computer screen, the satellite imagery. So basically it shows where the cloud is. This is a, it's indicating over the southern hemisphere. So it shows where um, the cloud is. As you can see over most of the country, it's clear there's no cloud that you can see. Um, so this is where 
the cold front is just southwest of the, um, the Western Cape. This is where Cape Town is, and this is where the frontal band of the cold front is, and you can see it with this cloud band over here. It is day as a guy up in the end. We definitely experience all the results of it up on the ground. We experience Ubushush, Ugumanda, Umoya, as well as Imvula, and it's all a result of this residence like a path as well. We are going to keep on flying after the break. There are so many flying objects that we still have to check out. Now, taking Dela and Delayo after the break. Your weather patterns get all over the change are causing global climate change. Now, climate change is a change in the long term weather patterns all over Israel. Now, the topic in modern weather study is the greenhouse effect. Now, this is a warming process that balances Earth's cooling processes. During the process, the sunlight passes through the Earth's atmosphere as shortwave radiation. As near as radiation is absorbed by the Earth's surface, as Earth's surface is heated, it emits long wave radiation toward the atmosphere. Up above the atmosphere, some of the long wave radiation is absorbed by certain gases called greenhouse gases. Energized molecules of gas then send out heat in all directions. By emitting heat energy towards the Earth, greenhouse gases increase the Earth's temperature. Now, get in these and the guy up in the air, and we definitely experience all the results of it up on ground. We experience heat, ukubanda, winds, nimvula, and it's all a result of things that happen above us. So, come on, see Papa and then we cave. There are so many flying objects that you can still check out. Here's what's coming up. We go back in time in clockwise. We are moving out all about the history of flight. So check out some amazing apps in cyberspace. Why can we get some awesome career advice from Ina Paper Z? We are going to go and go back to go go. Charms. Charms. So we just now get a green tube and choose our end to fly and go zoom zoom. We do a MC get it right here on SABC One. Zanzi for sure brought to you by Ava Kolonke and Kolonke Bebe to bring the SABC education. We are taking to the skies and checking out all kinds of flying objects. Now, Mshanje nowadays getting onto E Bano is something millions of people are buying. Njalo Mita Namalanga, but it took us a while to get to that point. Njalo Kanye, it took centuries to try and build flying machines and decades to create new technology for us to perfect the art of flight. Bano ya zio ge. Kesi san kesi samanga. We might even get to a point where we have flying cars. Ukupapa is not something that man does naturally. We are the only species up and coming that have created artificial means of flying using game machines as well as helicopters. And saying better now, let's take a trip back in time to see exactly how it all started and how we got to this point in the That's what team. Buckle up, go on clockwise. Ukupapa means the freedom to go just about anywhere, and it's a concept that's always fascinated us. Now, aviation history goes way back with Leonardo da Vinci inventing the air screw and parachute in the 16th century. The artist also drew diagrams of a helicopter and a glider. For 1783, the Montgolfier brothers created a linen, fire-powered balloon that floated in the air for more than five miles. Now, it was during the early 1900s when the flight's successful craft was built by the Wright brothers. Orville and Wilbur Wright, two bicycle makers from America, created the Kitty Hawk Flyer and successfully launched it in December 17, 1903 when it flew for 12 seconds. In 1905, the first aircraft company was created by two Frenchmen, Charles and Gabriel Voisin. And shortly after that, Glenn Curtis created the first US airplane company in New York. Then the technology has moved really fast. So we got from building a very simple flying machine to building planes that go faster than sound. Mm -hmm. The Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird is the current airspeed record holder for a manned air-breathing jet aircraft with a speed of 3.530 kilometers an hour. That's one way of beating traffic. And speaking of high-tech developments, let's head to cyberspace to see what's online. If one of you into UFO spotting, UFO Hunters for Android is the app for you. Yes, for you. It shows you the most recent UFO activities all over the world by collecting the most important and latest UFO sightings, reporting to different organizations and directly to websites. UFOhunters.com is the website you gotta check out. If you want to try your hands at flying, you can fly over mountain valleys, waterfall, canyons and caverns and land your plane on aircrafts, carriers, airfields and airports with the flight theory app and if you want all the latest news on aviation technology and developments check out the world's premier aviation website at www.avweb.com do it now
flying objects and there are lots of different careers you can look into in aviation from air traffic controller to pilot or even air hostess. Mm -hmm. Check out our career segment to get some advice on what you need to do to get a job in the aviation industry. Begala. Think about becoming a flight attendant. Now, a career as a cabin crew lets you travel both locally and internationally while you get with a wide variety of people. It can be glamorous but also involves uksabens and zima and long hours. Umage, when you want to train to become a member of the flight's cabin crew, you'll need a matric certificate. You have to be between the ages of 18 and 35. You must be neat and presentable. You must be able to swim. You must be well-groomed and you must be able to speak English. Most flight attendant training schools are in the Johannesburg area. And to find out more about these, where you can apply, visit www.cabincrewtraining.co.za. Keep hitting those books. Fire all phones, because there are a lot of careers out there that's definitely one for you. about what they do and how they get into it. I guess what I'm trying to put my hair about it. Kataruna Banayan, Beneba Bakpori, hey, career you're forecasting, Bahuit Amena. Some of the things that you need to consider is in high school, you need to have mathematics and science. Um, in varsity and university, you study the, um, the course BSc Meteorology. And then you do it for three years, including your honors. And then when you get to your honors level, you get to choose whether you want to do, you want to become a researcher, um, or you want to do forecasting, which is what I do. Uh, to all the youngsters outside, outside there, if Bafuna Okfana Jangani a traffic controller, basically it's easy. Uh, the requirements, if you have a math and science, geography, Nayomona, it's still okay. I'm a symbol of Nagwatole, it's these higher grades. And then for more information, you can still come to the Swarkop Museum for more information about the Apple Aranja. Yo, 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 yes, for business, we have my social sessions. We're talking about Namtlanja. Last school of an hour, we're going to talk about Namtlanja throughout this whole entire time. Facebook, we're going to talk about Namtlanja. So don't forget to check out J on Twitter, at IMJ209. Don't forget to click on the hashtag throwbacks. Now, you're going to throw back to an episode that we had on magic. Which is science is awesome. I love it. And the magic stuff, I enjoy it too. But I don't want to do that. Lol. <laughs> Love your show, guys. Big ups! Big ups, Nagu. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Can you make it disappear? Yes, you do. You know? Yes. Uh, next lifetime. Next lifetime. Yo, okay. Hit us up on Facebook. Hit us up on Twitter. Drop it on Facebook.com forward slash TOMZ. On Twitter, we are simply TOMZ underscore SABC underscore one. The main is a long again up in the air as well as into outer space. Now, I think we did pretty well, Gunko and I'm Sandra. So, that's a wrap for today. Mm, but as always, we'll be back with more amazing science and tech know how and info that will keep you on the edge of your seat. So, in Alapeka, don't forget to tune in next time. For now, it is goodbye and God bless. Next time on TOMZ. Sikuma Elizo Lab Resource Management. The motel are a construction site supporting a quantity surveying. We learn about how wireless internet works. Uh, you may be excited, yes, no, maybe. Sometimes, then when not be sure to get a two MZ, crong a mivula now, resmini, yen sing me, yes, in it. No, and so go. Only have a good SAP swan. That's it, for sure.